Hey guys, Brendan from TAT here. Um, today I just want to show you a bit of uh, driver seat diagnostics using the scan tool on this Tarago. Okay, so I've got a Tarago in here with a check engine light. Um, a pretty classic case of being able to do a lot of our diagnostics using the scan tool. Now, um, some of you might have seen that I was able to run a scan tool um, data interpretation type course um, in Queensland earlier in the year. Due to COVID, obviously, that all kind of broke down. Um, we will be having sessions early next year, so keep an eye out for that for some training. But um, I just wanted to run you through this. It's a pretty classic case of the kind of stuff that you can look at, even using your basic OBD data. Got this Tarago here. Obviously, we can see we've got a check engine light on and the other stability control lights that are on in sympathy for that. Uh, what are we at? About 130,000 kilometers on the clock. Um, now, I'm in scan tool here. We set up some focus. Now, I went into Toyota, got myself some codes, started looking at some data, and the data wasn't very good in Toyota. You know, it was missing a lot of basic PIDs, like your, your oxygen sensors. So, I've gone straight to OBD2 now. Um, if you want to have a look at the codes themselves, so we've got a PO171 system 2 lean. Now, when we were in um, Toyota, it also had a startability fault one, which is pretty common on your Toyotas whenever they get a long crank. And so, that's our first clue. Um, it does have a slight long crank um, if I do quick starts in, in succession not too bad leave it sit for over a minute you get a bit of a longer crank so immediately we're starting to think uh, possibly everyone's had the you know, fuel filters that will leak back and cause an issue um, looking through the um, logbook as you know we haven't seen this car before it's a, a different um, lube sticker to ours um, there is a signature in there saying that the fuel filter was done um, about two services ago and the customer did say this that the long cranks lasted quite a while but the check engine lights a pretty new thing so um, taking an absolute age here to get me some freeze frame data but there we go so worth looking at the freeze frame to understand are we looking at something that's lean at idle lean under load or what so things that stand out to me 2700 rpm you know decent amount when we go to absolute throttle position and if we were to look at load and um, that's going to give us a very good idea of what we're doing as well so just going down looking at load there calculated 90 and absolute 70 67 so a decent amount of load and those those that um, were quick enough would have seen short-term fuel trim, you know, negligible, long-term fuel trim absolutely pegged out at 40%. So basically I'm looking for a, um, I'd call it a cruising load, maybe a little bit more at uh, 2,700 RPM and I think I snuck a look there around 29 um, kilometers an hour. So straight away I'm not thinking vacuum leak, right? It's, it's not happening at idle um, as bad by the look of it. It um, seems to be something under load, it gets worse. Now, obviously, we're going to want to confirm that for ourselves. So we'll get in and see exactly what data we've got right now. Okay, so the main things that I'm going to be concerned with are obviously our fuel trims at the moment. So Right now, again, short term is negligible because it's all ramped up onto the long term where we're putting in positive 22 at idle. So we're having to add a 22% injector duration basically is the easiest way to think of it to achieve stoichiometric um, air fuel ratio. Now I'm going to raise the RPM. So I'm up to about 4,000 RPM standstill now. Um, yes, the long term's gone up 28%. Short term's come back in sympathy a little bit. So really I'd say not too much of a difference, but again, you would use this to prove um, I'm not looking for a vacuum leak. So if we had a vacuum leak, that would have dropped like a rock. The short term would have been fighting and we would have been closer to zero. Um, so not much load here at a standstill, but again, I don't believe we've got a vacuum leak and that doesn't go with our symptoms of a long crank, right? So we're thinking maybe we've got an issue in the fuel tank, you know, probably a leaking o-ring in the fuel filter assembly, maybe a pump, something like that. Sure, we could have a math that's dirty. So what are we gonna do to try and um, narrow that down just on a, a test drive? I'm gonna put a few up here just so you can see what I'm doing as well. So we'll go engine speed, throttle position so you can see when I'm on the throttle. Um, I'm going to take, we may as well get our long and short term fuel trim. Let's throw our airflow meter in there. Um, I'm going to take the rear oxygen sensor voltage and we'll also take the front O2, um, sorry, not equivalents, but the 
front O2 voltage and milliamps, which tells me that this is a wideband O2 sensor, which, yes, they um, are different to read than a narrow band that's zero to one volt, but still, um, you can utilize them to do what I'm going to do here, a wide open throttle test down the road. So, I've got all that data there. Um, I'm gonna throw it into graph mode, and what we'll do first is just to show you how these are going to operate. So, if I were to give this a big blip on the throttle, which I'll do right now. So that was foot to the floor, big throttle. Now that should be wide open throttle enrichment. You'll notice my rear O2 dropped like a rock. That should have gone rich. Um, the front O2 being a wide band, you'll notice they go opposite. So this voltage here that it's trying to maintain on it, which is a Toyota specific voltage, um, that should drop down for a lean condition, which yes, is different to what we expect to see from a narrow band, the rear. So you still can use them. This tells me the front O2 went lean and so does this milliamp. So milliamps works similar to the voltage. We would wanna see it go um, up means we had a lean condition, whereas down means we had a rich condition. Again, to reiterate it, very different to a narrow band sensor which is our rear one where um, down will be lean and up will be rich so you see they're they're reverse of each other basically right okay so if we go down the street now I'm going to clear out that data and all I'm going to do is a wide open throttle pull down the street so handbrake off um, forgive me that you're probably not going to be able to see this very well live but we'll pull over and um, and pause it and have a look at what we get so once all the traffic goes, of course someone starts to cruise slowly past me at this point. Okay. So, so pulling out and going wide throttle, wide open throttle now. Got up to close to what I would call max RPM of around five and a half grand. And now we'll just pull over and I will pause this. Okay, so let's have a look at what we got. So, um, you'll see if I use some cursors around here, somewhere in that area, you see I did get to you know, a decent RPM 5,000 or so. You can obviously see where my throttle went full throttle. Airflow got to fairly reasonable 110. You know, if I was seeing under 100 there, it'd be a big red flag for me to definitely go check the math. Um, short term, long term fuel trim, we're not concerned with because I was at full throttle. We're in wide open throttle enrichment. Now, the main thing, as soon as I went full throttle, you can see again, rear O2 dropped like a rock and absolutely um, went lean as anything. Um, the front O2 was doing a similar thing. Now, as I said, you know, these will react quite differently. So I can see that rear O2 was reporting um, an extremely lean condition the entire time. You can see that the voltage and the, the milliamp current of the front O2 kind of mimic each other. On that initial um, snap, you know, it went up, so we had quite a lean condition. Basically, it got, um, it recovered um, partially down towards the end here, but that rear O2 staying extremely lean um, is a, a big tell for me. So, as I say, you know, we've, we've only been sitting here in the... Um, the driver's seat and I've got a pretty good um, idea here that I'm probably not heading particularly for my math I'm not looking for a vacuum leak and I'm probably I've definitely got a you know very lean condition happening um, all throughout the rpm range really um, so I think I'm going to chase a fuel delivery issue okay guys so skipping forward a little bit on this one now so um, we did have a gauge on it and the pressure was slightly lower not too bad only under by a few psi but um, definitely dropped off as soon as you'd give it more load or if you turn the car off you know that typical drop off like a rock of fuel pressure so typically when we turn the car off you know we should um, only drop off say like 10 20 psi and then even after several hours or overnight you'd still want to maintain around um, even often 20 psi or so in the um, fuel delivery system this one just dropped off to zero so we're pretty confident that we had a, a leak and the way they were able to test it so I've got the fuel filter module out now and it's over on the bench and basically as I often do um, to see if it's no ring or whatnot this is our outlet 
to the engine. I'm just going to pulse a little bit of shop air in there. I'm not going to blow the thing to pieces, but we're just going to pulse a little bit of shop air in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, from that scene, all right. So a little bit of driver's seat diagnostics there, guys. So like I said, keep an eye out when we finally can get those dates out. Looks like you know COVID is finally moving away. We're starting to get back to some normality. So take a look when we get some dates out and hopefully I'll be able to get round. We'll discuss things like this, but also moving into the future. So, you know, touching on things like the right to repair, um, some manufacture specific um, sites and, and things like that as we move into the, the new era of um, you know, diagnostics. Thanks guys.